Attack on Titan Season 4 Part 3 Episode 1, kind of a handful of a name, is finally here. Uh, and here's my review of it. I'm going to be going through most of it in a pretty quick timing, but if you really want to get the full dialogue, like everything, just go watch the episode, and then you can come back. And also, I will be making extra videos about you know, analysis in this episode, because this episode had a lot. I'm going to try and get like most of it done in this small, short video, so yeah. Starting off in this episode, we have that guy, the little kid. Uh, I think his name is like Zam something. It starts with a Z. You don't really need to know his, his name. You just need to know that his character is important, especially to Aaron, because it gives us a good insight into Aaron's uh, empathy of the whole situation. You never really get to see Aaron's kind of reflection or what he feels about the rumbling at any point throughout season four, uh, part two. And now we kind of get to see what he felt like beforehand and about the rumbling in general. So we see him crying to this kid because he sees in the future that he's going to kill this kid from the rumbling. This kid will die due to the rumbling, he'll get smashed. And so we see him crying because, and the kid doesn't know like why he's crying, he's like, why are you crying, you just saved me. He realizes that saving him now was no purpose because he's just going to have him dead anyway. And you really get to see that like Aaron is not happy about the rumbling, this is something he is, he wants but is not happy about. If, you understand this was his only option basically and we see throughout the episode of the beginning that he pretty much gets certified that yeah I kind of have to do this otherwise paradise is gone they will 100% disappear if Aaron doesn't do anything about this the rumbling is something a bit extreme but it will certify it it is a solution that will certify them safety right anyway back to our main crew you know present time uh, so far, what they want to do is they want to use the airplane that uses like Titan Crystal to fly to get to Aaron to try and stop him, right? The Titans are getting very close to them. They need to hurry this process up, get in the airplane, get out of there, right? And uh, basically what happens is Flotch, Flock, however you say his name, I, I forgot, I think it's Flotch, right? He tries to stop them in one last gun fury, but is quickly stopped. It's not much of a challenge. And uh, we kind of get to see his final dialogue, and it is kind of, you know, interesting and sad. I'm not really I really didn't like the kid guy, to be honest, but it is sad to see his point of perspective where he wanted Aaron to go through, and you would see how these people are when they saw Aaron do what he needed to do. They were like, finally, someone is standing up for us. There has been no solutions. And this is something that Hanji and Jean talk about, how they basically didn't create any solutions for the upcoming war with Marley, because Marley was going to attack regardless. Anyway, we get probably the most emotional scene in Attack on Titan so far, and that was Hanji's death. Guys, this is such a sad scene. Obviously, I, wore it, I read the manga, so I already knew this was going to happen, but they made this scene epic in the anime, okay? They made it way more bigger than, honestly, I thought it, I felt it was when I read the manga. When I read the manga, you know, you don't get the same feeling that you do with the anime, you know? So, that's the music and everything. It was perfect, and yeah, she had to die because she needed to hold off these Colossal Titans so that they can get in the airplane and fly away before the Colossal Titans destroyed them. And she did a good job. She was able to get them to stop or basically get a bunch of them down before they were able to fly away. Levi is kind of feeling better, uh, you know, still like messed up, but he can fight. And eventually they get the plane flying. They go over to Eren. Anyway, once the airplane does reach uh, near Eren, uh, we get to see something really cool, and that's Zeke come out of Eren to protect him. Now, this isn't Zeke. I know people might think that this is just Zeke protecting Eren. That's not Zeke. It's just Zeke's Titan. You see, Eren got full control of Zeke when he activated the rumbling. If you remember that scene where those weird little things, the little worm things were coming towards Zeke in Season 4, Part 2, that that's what's controlling him. So Eren has full control of the Beast Titan, not Zeke, just the Beast Titan royal blood thing, right? I should also mention that Eren uh, is allowing them to fight back because he, in his mind, these people are free to do whatever they want. He gave them freedom. Now do whatever you want with their freedom. And if that means attacking me, that's part of your freedom. You're well to do that. That's a scene that happens in the anime. Just watch that scene yourself because I'm not, I'm not doing it justice when I'm explaining it. But that's the general cases of what you're supposed to get from that scene is that Aaron is allowing them freedom it's why he, he's letting them use their Titan transformations otherwise he can just transfer he could turn off all Titan transformations but he's not because he's giving them freedom because that's the whole end goal of the situation we see Levi come and try to attack the Beast Titan and we also see Mikasa come out and they're basically gonna fight the attack Titan Aaron um, as well as Zeke because uh, yeah and that's basically where the episode stops but yeah thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video peace